Hello and welcome to News Now. Nigeria's President Mohamed Buhari says the end of terror group Boko Haram in Nigeria is in sight. In a statement by his senior special assistant on media and publicity, Garba Shehu, Buhari confirmed that his administration is working hard to end the insurgency. He also assured Nigerians of the ability and readiness of the country's armed forces and security agencies to contain the activities of the terrorists. The president urged all Nigerians not to be unduly discouraged by the seeming resurgence of terrorist attacks and uh, atrocities in the country as his administration remains fully committed to overcoming the challenges of insecurity, terrorism and insurgency as quickly as possible. Meanwhile, President Mohamed Buhari has expressed the hope that his forthcoming meeting with President Barack Obama of the United States of America will further strengthen bilateral ties between Nigeria and the U.S. Speaking at a meeting with the United States Deputy Secretary of State Anthony Blinken in Abuja, President Buhari said that his talks with President Obama will also give a much-needed impetus to his administration's efforts to overcome the challenge of terrorism. The president told Blinken that Nigeria also looks forward to greater support from the United States for the multinational joint tax force being mobilized against Boko Haram. Buhari will be hosted by U.S. President Barack Obama at the White House July 20th to discuss fighting the Boko Haram militant group, among other issues. To legal matters now, a federal high court sitting in Kano State, northwest Nigeria, has ordered former governor of Jigawa State, Sule Lamido, accused of financial crimes, to be remanded in Kano prison till September 28. Lamido was arraigned on Thursday alongside his two sons, Aminu and Mustafa. All three were ordered to remain in Kano State prison till September 28, when their bail applications will be heard. They have been accused of receiving 1.3 billion naira bribe from a government contractor during Lamido's tenure as governor of Jigawa State. They all pleaded not guilty to the charges brought against them, of course, by the EFCC. Former governor of Imo State, Ikedio Hakim, has been granted bail in the sum of 270 million naira by a federal high court in Abuja, or Hakim, who has been prosecuted for a $2.29 million fraud allegedly perpetrated in 2008, is to also produce a surety resident in Abuja to guarantee the bail. Justice Adeni Ademola, in his ruling on the bail application Thursday, ordered the prosecuting agency, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, to submit the passport and other travel documents seized from the former governor to the deputy chief registrar of the court. The EFCC had on Wednesday arraigned or Hakim on three counts of fraud, including making cash payment of $2.29 million for a property in Asokoro, Abuja. Now, that amount is above the threshold approved for an individual going by the provisions of Section 1 of the Money Laundering Prohibition Act 2004. The former governor is also accused of deliberately neglecting to disclose all his assets and the declarations submitted to the EFCC. Granted bail because uh, the court has said that um, uh, that every accused is presumed innocent or yes. to proven guilty. Uh, that is the only comment I will make now. Yes. Uh, the rest will be next time. Thank you, Thank you very much. A very liberal terms as we have asked the court to do. While the matter is now adjourned to 20th of October, mm. let us not talk beyond this point. We are satisfied with the bail conditions we are. We have also thanked the court for the liberal bail conditions. Thank you. Now, barely 24 hours after it was indicted by a corona in Lagos, southwest Nigeria, over the collapse of one of its buildings, the Synagogue Church of All Nations has rejected the corona's ruling that it should be prosecuted over the incident for criminal negligence. 116 persons died when the building collapsed. Most of the dead were South Africans who were staying or visiting the church at the time and staying in the ill-fated building. The church, owned by popular preacher T.B. Joshua, on Thursday rejected the verdict of the corona on the grounds that it was, quote, unreasonable, one-sided and biased, end of quote. The church maintained its stand that the incident was as a result of sabotage. Just yesterday, the council uh, for the church had welcomed the verdict, contradicting the church's latest stand on the ruling. Let's take a listen to what the lawyer to the church now said yesterday. As far as we are concerned, we have been vindicated. 
that we did not patronize quacks, that we procured good materials, that we use current certified engineers. So, as far as we are concerned, indeed, the coroner's inquest has vindicated the position of the church. Well, the church is now singing a completely different tune. Now, the Lagos coroner, Oyetari Komalafe, has said that surety construction and weak foundations led to the collapse of the building. To another court case, now a federal high court sitting in Port Harcourt has dissolved the 22 local government councils in River State, Nigeria's South-South region. Presiding Judge Justice Lambo Akombi of the federal high court one gave the verdict in his ruling on Thursday. He said the decision of the administration of former Governor Chibika Amechi to go ahead with the conduct of the council election on May the 23rd in spite of a court order asking all parties to maintain status quo was a flagrant abuse of court process and disregard for the rule of law. And while the River State Command of the Nigeria Police says it has foiled an attempt by arsonists to raise the federal high court, two explosions reportedly went off at the premises of the court. No casualties were recorded. Lagos State Governor Akimomi Ambodi has directed that the law prohibiting street trading and begging in Lagos be enforced effectively. In a statement signed by the Secretary to the State Government, Tunji Bello, Ambodi expressed concern on the resurgence of street trading in major areas of the state, noting that not only do they constitute environmental nuisance, but also pose security threat to citizens. There's already an existing law in Lagos prohibiting street trading and begging in the state. The governor urged those interested in doing business to seek space in various modern markets redeveloped by the state government to enhance business activities. Ambody said if they continue to sell on the streets, they will be arrested and prosecuted. He also frowned at the prevalence of street begging, saying some people hide under the guise of seeking arms to rob unsuspecting members of the public. Nigeria's main opposition party, the People's Democratic Party, insists that contrary to claims by the presidency, the $2.1 billion liquefied natural gas component of the bailout for states was actually saved by the immediate past president, Jonathan-led PDP administration. The party said, in actual fact, the LNG dividend stood at $5.6 billion even before the handover date of May 29th and would have been shared but for the insistence of former President Goodluck Jonathan that it be left for the incoming administration to manage. PDP National Publicity Secretary Luis Ametu in a statement said the issuance of the bailout with funds from the LNG proceeds and the excess crude account ECA has exposed the fact that the PDP administration actually left behind huge sums of money. Matu says this is contrary to the impression earlier given to Nigerians and the international community that the new administration met a virtually empty treasury. We'll take a short break now. News now will be right back. Don't go away. Continue to stay tuned to TV360. Every day, every hour, and every minute, news break in Nigeria. Things happen so fast, it's most times difficult to track and comprehend them. But that's what we do right here on DJ360. 2015, would you want to come back again? It's like asking Jesus Christ if he knew he was going to die, will you, come, will you want to come back as the savior of the world again? We do not just help you track the stories, we break them down. Explore all the angles, analyze the issues so that you can fully comprehend the stories and use them to make the right decisions. Welcome back. The Central Bank of Nigeria Thursday said it would not be focusing on the thinly traded parallel market when determining the exchange rate. This comes despite the Naira hitting record lows on the unofficial market since last week. The Naira fell to a low of 235 to the dollar on the parallel market on Thursday. One Naira 50 Kobo, of course, uh, down on the day as dollar shortages persisted. CBN spokesperson Ibrahim Wazo said there's no, there is a need to de-emphasize the parallel market. Central bank, uh, worried by rising inflation, has said it is in no mood to devalue the Naira again after it tightened access to hard currency for the import of a wide range of goods. Since the measures, the Naira has weakened steadily on the black market. Now, on Wednesday, the central bank governor, Godwin Emefiele, told journalists in Abuja that the country's foreign exchange reserves had started to recover gradually with its management of dollar demand and government's effort 
to plug all leakages. This opportunity to commend the efforts of His Excellency, the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Muhammad Buhari, for his dogged approach in saying that all, all leakages will be blocked. That with, with those singular efforts and the strong determination, we've seen our reserves, foreign reserves, moving from about $29 billion that it was when His Excellency took office on 29th of May to $31.89 billion that it is um, at this time. We briefed the Senate extensively about all the actions we have taken and as well as other things that we are going to do to continue to strengthen the Nigerian economy, make it possible for our people to, 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 I mean, to, have, to, to create jobs for our people. And we are saying even if we can't employ people, what actions are we going to take to, to, to encourage those who have entrepreneurial um, uh, skills so they can create jobs not only for themselves for, and for, 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 for other people. I'm delighted to mention to you that the Senate, after almost about three hours deliberation, uh, has um, graciously endorsed our, our actions today uh, for everything that we have done. But I want to assure Nigerians that whatever actions we have taken is done in the interest of our country. And I say it that our reserve is our commonwealth and we have a right to protect our foreign reserve. And we are going to continue to avoid situations where speculators and round trippers come into our, to the country and think of how they can take advantage of what is happening as a result of the drop in crude prices to plunder our reserves. Central Bank Governor Godwin Emefiel is speaking there on the foreign reserves. Now, crude oil features jumped 3% on Thursday, rebounding forcefully from the three-month lows of this week as China's stock market steadied from its collapse. And, of course, uncertainties remained about a nuclear deal that will allow Iran to export more crude. Brent crude features were up $1.80 or 3.2% at $58.85 a barrel, rising more than $2.00 at the session high. It had endured an early April low of $55.50 uh, on Monday. U.S. crude features rose $1.25 to $52.90, rebounding this week's three-month low of $50.58 uh, actually. Now, Greece has until the end of Thursday to present new proposals to secure a third bailout from creditors and prevent a possible exit from the, Europe, from the Eurozone actually. Now, Prime Minister Alexis Tsipras says um, the next hours will be crucial to the country. The new proposals will be studied by Eurozone finance ministers on Saturday and a full EU summit on Sunday. Chris is desperate for a third bailout to avoid bankruptcy and possibly crashing out of the euro currency. Chris's creditors, the European Commission, the European Central Bank and, of course, the International Monetary Fund have already provided more than 200 billion euros in two bailouts since the rescue plan began five years ago. To sports now, the Super Eagles of Nigeria have dropped a massive 15 places in the FIFA ranking after the latest edition placed them in 57th place. The team slipped behind African teams such as Congo, Egypt and Egypt despite recording a 2-0 victory against Chad in their last outing. The drop in the ranking completes an eventual week for, or eventful I should say, week for the Nigerian national team as they recently lost their coach, Steven Keshe, for breaching the, t the terms of his contract. Algeria remained first in Africa, though they moved in two places uh, in the world ranking. Argentina replaced Germany as number one, despite losing at the final of the Copa America tournament. Well, let's just hope Nigeria picks up. Too bad for Nigeria. We just keep going down, 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 down. Now, the Flying Eagles of Nigeria has been grouped with defending champions Ghana, Senegal and Egypt in the Group B of the football event at the All-Africa Games. The draw ceremony took place Thursday morning at the CAF headquarters in Cairo, Egypt, in preparation for the AAG, which takes place in September. The matches will be played between September 3 and September 18, with the top two in each group advancing to the semi-final. Speaking after the draws, coach Samson Siasia insisted that his team were not afraid of any of their opponents. Meanwhile, the last time Nigeria took gold in this event was in 1973, when the tournament was hosted in Lagos. 
Let's see what happens now. Wall number one, Serena Williams has advanced to the final of the 2015 Wimbledon after defeating Maria Sharapova. Williams won the Russian fourth seed 6-2-6-4 on Thursday. Sharapova, who had not beaten Williams since 2004, was unable to prevent a 17th straight defeat. The victory keeps Serena on course to winning all four major titles this year. She will now face Venezuela-born Gabin Muguruza, I should say, in the final, which takes place on Saturday, July the 11th. Quite a jaw-breaking name, I should say. Congratulations to Serena Williams. Let's just wait and see if she gets uh, that 17th title. Thank you very much for watching News Now. That's it for now. We'll be back again later.